Hello. Welcome to Rutland Weekend Television. We have a superb evening ahead of us. Darling, I love you. We've got a film. I've always loved you. We've got some really smashing programmes. Come away with me now. We've got some comedy. And I've always loved you too, Frank. Really? And we've got a quiz game. Ever since I saw you in makeup. I thought you hadn't noticed me. We have some football. And we... Oh, for heaven's sake, come on. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before we start, I'd like first of all to introduce the committee of the Soliol Wife Swapping Club. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Phillips, Mr. Robinson and Mrs. Robinson, Mr. Jones and Mrs. Watson, Mr. Watson and Mrs. Jones. Now, we in Soli... Mr. and Mrs. Phillips, Mr. Robinson and Mrs. Jones, Mr. Jones and Mrs. Watson, Mrs... Mr. Phillips and Mrs. Robinson... Mr. Robinson and Mrs. Jones, Mr. Jones and... Mr. Phillips, Mrs. Robinson and Mrs. Watson, Mr. Robinson and Mrs. Jones, Mr. Watson alone, and Mr. Jones and... Mr. Phillips. We interrupt this programme to bring you a weather flash. Reports are just coming in of some rain near Hendon. Um, first report suggests that it's not heavy and that it should stop in about 20 minutes. We'll be keeping you up to date with this and other further rainy developments as they occur. That is the end of the weather flash. That was wonderful. Oh, really, darling? Thank you so much. Two minutes, please, Minister. Oh, thank you. This man is a politician. In a few moments, he'll be doing a well-paid television job. In the street outside, a line of shivering men wait, hopefully. These are MPs who are not so fortunate, queuing desperately for the chance of a job in television. A chat show, a discussion, a panel game, anything will do as they face the sad fact that for MPs, there just aren't enough television jobs to go round. I've got to work. Please, Mr Robinson, my constituents are muttering. I haven't done a telly for three months. I'm sorry, John. They said you'd had too much to drink. Oh, I'll leave it alone. You can be as drunk as you like in the house, John, but these television people are touching. Oh, my God! Bo Robinson is in casting. He's responsible for booking top politicians. Most of the major political stars started off looking for work here. Morning. Morning. Any jobs? Name. Oh, any jobs, Mr Robinson? No, no, no. Your name. Oh, um, Watkins, Luton South. Majority. Uh, 340. Sure. Any previous experience? Uh, well, I was on the news at 10 once. When? Uh, well, I, I was at the back of shot. I, I, I was just behind Reginald Bosenkett's head. I mean, if he'd moved his head a little more to the left, uh, you'd have seen my ear. Have you got a famous dog or a daughter with big tits or anything? Uh, no. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, things are very tight at the moment. I can juggle. Can you? Well, we could use that. A juggling MP. We could certainly work on that. Do you think you could juggle and answer questions at the same time? Um, yes, I think so. Well, I'll give Robin a ring and see what we can do. It's not only casting sessions that are difficult. There are the auditions that all MPs dread. This is Jeff Grittall's big chance, an audition for a major party political broadcast. If he gets this, it could be the big break in his career. All right, next. Grittall, Lester West. Action! <clears throat> good evening. Um, oh, incidentally, um, when I say good evening, I don't mean uh, uh, totally good, you know, not, not good for everyone. I, I, I mean... Uh, just uh, good as opposed to bad, but um, but obviously I don't want to say uh, not bad evening, so uh, good evening. Um, oh, and when I say evening, it doesn't have to be evening. It can be any time you like, you know, it can be morning. Or... Ah, next! What? Next, please! Uh, uh, I haven't got to my speech yet. Next, please! Uh, I didn't do any of the speech I prepared. That's okay, we've seen enough. Um, was it all right, though, the bit I did? 
It was lousy. Um, how, how did it seem out there? Terrible. Sheer death. Uh, did, did it come across all right? Diabolical. Um, you can say quite frankly, you know. Quite frankly, it stank. If, if you didn't like it, pl please just say. I didn't like it. It was horrible. Um, please feel free to say what you felt, because I shan't be hurt. Hurt? You should be put down. You made me ill. No, but if, if you felt it wasn't too good, please just say, because any criticism helped. Help! You're beyond help. You made me vomit. Uh, well, you can say quite honestly. All right, all right. It was fine. Really? Yeah, yeah. You really liked it? Yeah, it was just great. Now shove off. Oh, thanks. Oh, and, and thanks for being so honest. Jesus. Right, next. Hey! Hey, wait a minute! Where'd you get this guy? We find him in the comments. Shall we take him away, boss? No, no, wait a minute. I like him. He's got something. Put your hand up his back. See if you can waggle his lips. He's not a dummy, boss. He's a stiff. He's great. You gotta use him, boss. Well, maybe, maybe. Compared to Heath, this guy's a live wire. Okay, we'll give him a try. Bradford Williams, ex Kirby West, market. Action! It's a bit dull, boss. Shh, give him a chance. It's very dull, boss. Shut up. Just listen to this guy. It's terribly dull, boss. Shh, he nearly started then. Boss, it's too damn dull. Yeah, you're right. Maybe it is dull. Maybe he is better. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. What if you were to crouch behind a guy and say he's voids? That would be better than he. Ah, uh, boss, I don't want to. Get up, don't whine. Come on, we're going to make this one. Okay, Harry, we'll shoot this. Got Ava. Not there. Crouch behind a guy. Got Ava, Nanger. Great. Everybody. Great. Tonight, uh, I wanted to talk about the house and the record of this government. Shoot pipe, this is it. In the 1972, they promised to make the million of the house a smell too, Jewish! Hey, sorry, boss. So for what are they done? Great! They not the builder any! Oh, soup boy! Shall I go on, boss? No, this is fine. We're gonna make her the disawana. There have been some complaints, sir, uh, that our uh, party politicals are getting a little... What? A little American, sir. Mickey Rooney. What? A little American, Mickey Rooney. Uh, no, 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 sir. Our programmes are too American. Bob Hope and Bing Crosby. What? Two Americans, Bob Hope and Bing Crosby. Uh, no, sir. P people have been saying that, um, that our, our tellies are getting fairly Americanized. Faye Dunaway. What? Fair American eyes, Faye Dunaway. No, sir. Now, how can I put this? Put it on your head. What? That's the best way. On your head. American fashion. No, sir. Look. Ah, a magazine. Look magazine. An American magazine called Look Magazine. Easy. People are saying that we're using a dead American ventriloquist. Uh, a dead American ventriloquist. Uh, don't tell me. Don't tell me. Uh, give me a clue. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Kosher. He's a Jewish dead American ventriloquist. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Uh, called Nosher. A Jewish dead American ventriloquist called Nosher. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Cuss. Circus. He's a Jewish dead American ventriloquist called Nosher who's never worked in a circus. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Nosher, oh, no. Of course, the Jewish dead American ventriloquist. But he worked in a circus. <laughs> I don't need pleasure, I don't feel pain If you were to knock me down, I'd just get up again I'm the urban spaceman, baby, and I'm making out I'm all about I wake up every morning with a smile upon my face My natural exuberance spills out all over the place I'm the urban spaceman, I'm intelligent and clean Know what I mean I'm the urban spaceman, as a lover second to none 
It's a lot of fun I never let my friends down I've never made a boo I'm a glossy magazine An advert in the tube I'm the urban spaceman, babe But here comes a twist I don't exist Good evening. Tonight's edition of Your Questions Answered comes from the charming Devonshire village of Biddle in Cornwall, and we have a delightful panel to answer the questions you put to us. First of all, a regular Hugh Jettle MP. Hello. From the medical profession, Dr. Alan Cunningham. Hello. Lady Antonia Spry, also a frequent guest. Hello. And Rachel Grant, resident psychiatrist at Leeds University. Hello. And can we have the first question, please, from a... Mrs. Betty Hargreaves. <clears throat> What does the team think of euthanasia? Thank you, Mrs. Hargreaves. What does the team think of euthanasia? Antonia. Euthanasia. What do you think of it? Let's have a medical viewpoint, Doctor. Rachel? Hugh? Well, never mind. Let's have our next question, please, from... Barry Candle. I'd like to ask the team where they would spend their second honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr Candle. A very entertaining question. Team, where would you spend your second honeymoon? Rachel. Where would you go for your second honeymoon? Anywhere in the world? No? Antonia, where would you go? Well, um... Somewhere amusing? Doctor. Hugh, will you please tell us where you'd go for your second honeymoon? Well, can we have the next question, please? And can we have something slightly simpler for our panel from... Norman Brand. Does the team think that life after death is a viable concept for the working classes, bearing in mind Marx's dictum that religion is merely a panacea to paper over the cracks of a decaying society. Does the... T no, we'll have something simpler from... Rita Fawcett, Miss, would the team give enough a chance? <laughs> No, we'll have something slightly more concrete from... Ira Cox, I would like to ask the panel what I think about inflation. Inflation? Anybody? Yes, Doctor. Um, can I use the phone? What? I I'd just like to ring the wife and say I won't be late. We're supposed to be doing a programme. Oh, um, are we going on late? No. Well, I'll just ring the wife then. There's more news about the rain in Hendon. It's apparently light to moderate and has been falling now for nearly 20 minutes. Experts are on the spot and reports suggest that it could well last for a further half hour. We'll let you have further news as soon as we have it. Won't we, darling? Yes, we will. And now on Rutland Weekend Television, it's time for Holiday 75. Isn't it, darling? Yes, it is, darling. Welcome to Holiday 75. Well, it's not so far been a very good year for holidays, what with travel firms collapsing, currency problems and inflation generally. In fact, with the difficulties and uncertainties of the tour operators likely to increase, many people this year are taking the holidays here 
in the Holiday 75 studio. Here, they can relax comfortably and cheaply in comfortable surroundings whilst we show them film of exotic sun-drenched places such as Mallorca and the Seychelles and other sun-drenched holiday sites. Lazy days, relaxation, fresh air and fun. Yes, for a jolly good week, you can't do better than visit the Holiday 75 programme. Relax in the BBC car park. Enjoy the wonders of the BBC golf course. Or take the scenic route through some of the world's most exciting scenery. The scenery of the palaces, the scenery of Zed cars, and the wonderful scenery of the Lulu Show. You can ride up and down in the comfortable lifts. Or you can go and see the scenery again. Yes, it's fun aplenty. And you don't have to worry about the weather. Good evening. Here is the latest weather forecast. Rain is still falling here in Hendon and is expected to continue for at least another hour. But here in the studio, the outlook is fine and should continue that way at least for another week. OK? Bye-bye. Yes, here you can keep fully up to date with the latest news and weather as it actually happens. Or you can go and see the scenery again. Visit the offices of exciting TV stars and see them in their wonderful natural habitat. Uh-oh, go easy with him, girls. Yes, once you've holidayed here, you'll return again and again. Last year, me and my wife spent a fortnight with Richard Baker. This year, we're going to Kenneth Kendall for a week and coming back via Nationwide. And there are a million things to do in the evenings. You can visit the shows. You can even work on the shows. About his childhood and how happy he was living uh, in the Highland Way. Or you can just dance to the music of Top of the Pops in the control room of the very studio where they make it. <laughs> and run, TK! It's so far out, it's out of sight. No heavy sea, no getting up tight. So just stay loose, my brother, I'll tell you where it's at. You can all get it on at the local laundromat. Yeah, run, load. Mr. Phillips and Mrs. Jones, Mr. Robinson and Mr. Watson, Mrs. Robinson, Mr. J Mr. Phillips and Mrs. Jones. The Prime Minister has cancelled a holiday and is returning to London for a cabinet meeting because of the rain in Hendon. An opposition spokesman said they were watching the rain very closely and would step in if necessary. Still no reaction from world leaders to the rain in Hendon. Our Russian correspondent says that Moscow Radio has made no reference to it. Henry Kissinger, visiting President Sadat of Egypt, is reported to have said at a state banquet last night that the rain in Hendon was a shame. From Washington, here's Christopher Servant. 
Here in Washington, the rain in Hendon has... Which of his happened from Washington? Oh, good morning, sir. Morning. Um, I'd like to buy some little. Um, uh, I'd like to, to buy some, some some. Don't I know you? No, I don't think so, sir. Uh, we didn't meet at the Preston Walkers. No, sir. No. Uh, well, I, I want to buy some little. <laughs> Of course. I'm so sorry. I've seen you on television. I'm sorry. I thought I knew you. No, sir, I don't work on television. I work in this shop. Oh, I see. Ah. Well, I, I want to buy some little... Oh, of course. I'm so sorry. <gasps> now I know who you are. I'm very sorry. Not at all. Now, sir, can I help you? Yes. Uh, you don't still do that scheme of purchasing people. Purchasing what, sir? Souls. Fish, sir? No, 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 no. It's a scheme you used to do. I wondered if you still did it. What scheme is this, sir? Uh, well, I mean, you would say, give me 24 years of power, riches, wealth, and pick of all the women in the world, and in return I would give you... What, sir? ...my soul. Is that all? Yes. Well, it doesn't seem a very good bargain on my part. Well, you do get a soul. Uh, can you eat it? No, 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 it's a soul. Oh, you can cash it at Barclays? No, 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 it's not a thing. It survives after death. A reputation? No. Smell? No, 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 no. It's, it's not physical. You just get my soul after my death. A dead soul? Yes. Not even alive? Well, no. Well, I don't want to seem a wet blanket, but it doesn't seem a very tempting offer. Well, look, I'm a businessman. I'm prepared to give you my soul and some cash. And in return, I give you anything you want? Yeah. Power, riches, women? Yeah, the usual things, yeah. <sighs> Cost you a bit, won't it? Well, isn't a soul worth a bit? Not a lot, sir. There's not a lot you can do with them. Uh, to be honest, I've got stacks of them here, old bloody shelves of them. It's difficult to know what to do with the bleeders. Oh, I see. Yeah, and you have to uh, dust them, label them... Yeah. ..catalogue them... Yeah. ..and then they just sit there soulfully. Well, they do sound a bit dull. They are dull, sir. I mean, if people left their privates, it would be more interesting. At least you'd have something to show your friends. Uh, I don't suppose you'd be interested in... What? Uh, no, no, I couldn't. No, I wouldn't take it, sir. Well, what about if I gave you my car? Oh, this does sound more interesting, sir. Yeah, I mean, I could leave you my car, my house and my life insurance policy. And in return, you get six months on the Riviera. And not 24 years? Oh, well, no, that was for the full medieval soul, sir. Well, what about if I gave you my wife's soul as well? And her body? All right. In advance? Well, not after 24 years. Oh, well, let's face it, sir. And to be a little bit brutal and a touch chauvinistic, after 24 years, your wife's body isn't going to be worth all that much. Oh, I see. Shall I call round for it tonight? What? Your wife's body? Uh, well... You get Ellen of Troy? Yeah, all right. Good. Uh, fill that in, sir, yeah. with that pen. So, yeah. Kenneth Hargreaves of Watkins Finance yeah. sold his soul to the devil for their Ford Zodiac the deeds of their three-bedroom maisonette, his cash endowment policy and his wife's body in advance. So, the next morning... Diddle, 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 dum, bum, bum. Morning, darling. Morning. Nice night? Mm, wonderful. Devil of a time, eh? Rather. Well, I suppose I'd better push off. Are you leaving for work? Uh, no, I'm leaving for 24 years debauchery, actually, darling. Oh. It's just a business deal I've done with Frank. Frank? Uh, yes, Frank Satan. Oh, shall I pack a bag? Oh, uh, no, 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 no. I'll pick up some things in uh, Troy. <laughs> Darling? Yes? It's just a small thing. Well, it's what you do with it, really. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, his tail. Yes? Well, does it... I mean, when you're in bed, it doesn't it... It comes off. Oh. Oh, yes, it unscrews. Oh. Yes, he unscrewed it before he came to bed. Propped it up in the corner. Oh, I see. Do we have a copy of Milton? Why? Well, it doesn't mention an unscrewing tail, does it? Oh, dear. The telltale unscrewing tail gave the first tiny indication that it might not be the devil at all, but only Ron Badger from the electric shop. The second indication occurred later that evening in a tiny commercial hotel near Bognor Regis. Wah, 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 wah. Why have we come to Bognor? It's very nice, Bognor. You might have made an effort on my first night. I have. I brought you some peeled prawns. 
Well, that's not a banquet. That is a treat. They're co-op peeled prawns. They're quite expensive. How come your tail unscrews? Hygiene. Hygiene? Yes, personal hygiene for cleaning. Doesn't say anything about it in Milton. What did he know about it? He was blind. Oh, yeah. Still, you'd have thought he'd mention something as important as an unscrewing tale for personal hygiene. He was writing a poem, not a medical textbook. Anyway, how would you like to sleep on a tail? Do you use it with girls? Don't be filthy. A tail is for, uh... For what? For, um, swatting flies and things. Do all angels have tails? Uh, small ones. Small tails? No, small angels have tails, big ones haven't. Why not? Lay off the bleeding questions, will you? Now, do you want a bird tonight or not? Yeah, all right. Who do you want? Juliet. Juliet? She's 14. She's underage. Well, never mind. Bring her anyway. Not in a commercial hotel in Bogner, I'm not, Mush. you get ten years for that. All right, all right. Bring me Helen of Troy. A very good choice. Couldn't be better. Come in, Helen. Hello. How do you do? Very pleased to meet you. Who's that? Helen of Troy. Get on. It is. Helen of Bleeding Edgbaston, more like. That's a Trojan accent. This bird's from Edgbaston. She's from Troy. All right, we'll soon settle this. If you're Helen of Troy, who's your husband? Menelaus. Blimey, it is Helen of Troy. Would I lie? We are now going over live to the rain in Hendon. And we hope to... Ah. television is now closing down. Isn't it, darling? Yes, it is, darling. 